What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment, and welcome to Archery and Unreal Part 2. And in this one, I'm going to show you some tips, tricks, and practices to make your own animations, but we're going to be using more of an archery style setup for today's demonstration. So let's go ahead, dive into Blender, and start doing some animating. So I have here a fresh scene in Blender, we're just going to drag and drop and delete everything out, and I'm going to go ahead and grab a character asset that I have, and this is something I've exported from Unreal Engine, so if you guys don't know how to do that, I'm going to be putting out a video right as this one comes out, with a link in the description of this video, so this way you can go and watch that quick one so you know how to do exporting out of Unreal Engine. However, once you have your character file, what we can do is just go File, Import, FBX, and I have it saved in here, so I'm going to go to my Archery Tutorial folder here, and I have the character FBX. So once it loads in, you might get this little uh, error code here. Don't worry about that. This is just a Python call that it's trying to find, but it does not actually have the information, so it's totally fine. It's just something to bear in mind. Now, once we have our character, one thing to also bear in mind is that this has no textures or materials, so you're going to see some stretching that'll happen on the character model that will not actually happen inside of the game, and this is due to the fact that the materials help kind of keep the textures from stretching too much, whereas the base model, the base mesh, actually will stretch a lot more than the textures will. And this is just because of a process called UV unwrapping. Now, if you guys are familiar with, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't know, don't worry about it. You don't need to know about it, at least not for this. So once we have our character here, we're going to make one adjustment to the rig here. So we're going to highlight the rig, go to the object data properties with the little running man icon, and then we're going to go down to where it says viewport display, and then we're just going to make sure in front is checked. Now what this will do as you see is this will go ahead and just make it so that way all of our bones are visible through our mesh. Now what we can do is we're going to start going in, in between pose mode and object mode to set up what is called an IK rig or an inverse kinematics rig. This is going to allow us to be able to make some quick and dirty animations that will actually look really good but just bear in mind that this is not going to be AAA game related but it'll definitely work for any indie game for certain. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the armature here and we're going to go into pose mode. Now to save some time I'm just going to say it now. We are going to be just I or I am just going to be saying object mode or pose mode. So one thing to keep in mind is that the keyboard shortcut to go in between these is control and tab while your armature is highlighted. This is very, very important. So control and tab is how you go in between object mode and pose mode. So what we'll do is we'll go right into pose mode here and we're just going to click on all of these big bones here and shift click on the rest of them. And we're going to hide them with H on our keyboard just to get them out of our way. Now, what we're going to be doing is adding the IKs to the feet first. So we're just going to look for the bone that rotates the feet. It looks like I grabbed the IK bone. So sometimes you might have to just click on because the IK bones are overlapping the regular bone. So as you can see, I just clicked on the same area, but now we're rotating the foot because I know this by using R and just moving my mouse around. As you can see, it's rotating. So what I can do is just right click. This way it doesn't apply any of the rotation and then just shift I on my keyboard and then to new empty object under the IK menu here. Now you won't see anything change yet and that's totally fine because we're going to be adding it to the other foot, the hands, as well as the head first and then we're going to go back and change some settings. But one thing you are going to need to do before you move on to the next piece is you're going to go back into object mode, click off on your screen, click on your armature, and then back into pose mode. This way it ensures to deselect the empty object that was just added. Because now we're going to go back to the other foot here and look for the bone that rotates it. Make sure that we have the right bone and not the IK bone. And then we're just going to, once we have it, shift I to new empty object. And this way, now we have an IK for both feet. So we're going to go back into object mode really quickly. Click off, click on the arbiter, back into pose mode, and do the same thing for the hands here. So we're just going to, you know, use R to rotate, make sure we have the right one, and then shift I to new empty object. Back into object mode, click off, click on the armature, then back into pose mode. Click on the other hand, make sure you have the right bone here. And then we're just going to go shift I to new empty object and then repeat the process one more time. So we're going to click off, go back to the armature, back into pose mode. And this time we're going to find the top head bone and we're going to shift I to new empty object. So now that we have all of our IK rigs set up, we're going to go into object mode really quickly. And we're just going to scale these down just by clicking and highlighting and then using S on our keyboard. This way we just don't have them overlapping each other really dramatically. And realistically, it just makes them very hard to know which one's which. So once we have them scaled, click on our armature back into pose mode, and we're going to change some settings on the IK rig setup. Now, all of your bones that have IKs are going to be yellowish. If you see this sort of like golden tan color, it's because you have two bones that are overlapping each other and letting you know that this is where an IK might be. So if you end up, if you go and click on this menu here, which is the blue bone icon, this is the bone constraint menu. And if you don't see this, you might just have to click on the one underneath it to make sure that this is selected. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to go and set the chain length to three, and then make sure rotation is checked. And as you can see, our mesh goes a little weird, but that's okay. We're going to fix that after, but we're going to go through and set the rest of the settings first. 
So we're going to go and find the other bone here. On the other side, set the chain length to 3, make sure rotation is checked. Go up to the hand, set the chain length to 3, making sure rotation is checked. Going up to the other side of the hand, setting the chain length to 3, and making sure rotation is checked. Now we're going to do something a little different on the head though. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the chain length to 3. However, we're going to uncheck weight position and then just check rotation. This way it'll just use rotation, we won't use weight position, and you'll see the difference in a moment. However, the first thing I'm sure you're seeing is what the heck just happened to my mesh? Well, that's just because the default rotation for the armature is going to be different than what the default rotation is for the actual IKs that are being that are controlling all of the hierarchy. So all we really need to do is go in and rotate the uh, the empties to be in a proper lineup. So we're just going to go back into object mode here and we'll start with the feet. So what we're going to do is this one is both kind of rotated up into itself and it's facing the wrong direction. So what we're going to do is RZ180 and then RY90, or I'm sorry, RY negative 90. So it's either a positive or negative value. And generally it's either 90 or 180. Like this one is going to be RY negative 90. And you can see now that the feet are properly aligned. Go to the hands here. We're gonna go RY90. Now on this side, we're just gonna go RX90, RY90, negative. And now, even though, yes, this hand's facing this way and this hand's facing this way, that's okay. As long as they're not just, like, looking weird, we can mess with the rotations after. We're going to have to do that on the feet anyways. As you can see, the toes are kind of pointing inwards. We're just getting it so that way it's ready for us to start doing some more work with it. So now we're on the head. We're just going to go RY negative 90. And then there we go. Because now what will happen is if I go, for example, on the head and I just go R and Z, I'm able to use the controller to rotate the head. However, if I go to the armature here, go into pose mode, click on this little hip bone here, and if I go R and Z, the head doesn't move and the arms don't really respond. If I go G and Z, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see what the feet do. You can see the feet now stay in position too, the hands stay in position, but the head does not. And that's because we made it so that way it only is affected by the rotation but the body is actually going to affect the location of the head. This is just to make it so that way the body is going to respond properly to when you're animating. So now that we have all of our IK set up, we're going to go back into object mode here. We're going to click on our armature and we're going to hide it because what we're going to use is mainly these IKs to be able to make most of our animations. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of go R and Z, rotate the hand in, R and Y to rotate the hand so this way it kind of straightens it out a little bit. And then we'll just kind of keep moving it in and down until we get a good looking rotation look because again it's just you know rotating it between the uh you know the x-axis y-axis moving it up and down along the z-axis and that's really all the ik rigs really do is it just makes it easier to be able to make animation data because you don't have to rotate each individual bone. You have one controller that's doing pretty much 90 percent of the work for you if honestly not more. So one thing I do recommend though, is as you can see here, when I get to a certain point, the wrist stops aligning itself. So you might have to do some, you know, clever up and down, left, right, to be able to make sure that everything is going to look the way you want it to. But once you have it, it should look something like this. And then we can just go to the feet here and go R and Z, R and Z. And then now we have the feet you know, facing forward, arms down by his side, and head facing forward. And this is going to be a good start position. So we can just drag and drop over everything and then go R and Z. And we're just going to rotate him. So this way we can give him kind of a side facing view. So this way he's going to be more in a combat stance because that's basically what we're going to be making. So once we have this position here, we can actually rotate him a little bit more. You don't want to go a full 90 degrees, but it, I will say it's, it's pretty close. So now what we'll do is we're going to grab the feet IK and we're going to go G y and we're going to move them out now don't worry they're not going to be they're not going to align themselves properly but that's totally okay because they're going to fix themselves when we go and do this next step so just make sure that there's somewhat even distance from the middle because then we can just go alt h to bring back in the armature click on it go into pose mode really quickly and then make sure that you select the uh, hip bone here and we're just going to go g and z and we're going to bring it down this way, as you can see here, again, you know, the feet stay based off of where the controllers are. So if we go and we put, drop the spine down a little bit, it's actually going to make it so that way the feet then realign to where they need to be. So this might be a little bit too much of a drop. So it's really up to you on, you know, how you do it. Again, I'm just showing you the overall process for making your animations, but how they look is entirely up to you. 
So what we're going to do now is go back in object mode here, and we're just going to rotate the front foot a little bit, and we're going to move it kind of along the X, Y axes. We're not going to move it along the Z axis because we want to make sure that it stays right in its position. But now we can just go to the other side, maybe move it back just a smidge like this. Because now we have kind of like a ready stance. Because we can now just grab the hand IK and do the kind of the same setup where we just drag it back, rotate it along the x-axis. And then we can just go, you know, bring it back along the x-axis, bring it down along the z-axis. You know, it's just basically continuously rotating and moving until you get the first position that you're happy with. Because what we're going to do is build off of that first position. So we want to make sure that whatever the combat idol is going to look like is going to be something we're going to be happy with. Now, you can also click on the armature and then H to hide it just to get it out of your way. As now we can, you know, move things, move with a little bit more freedom, I guess. Because we're just going to keep rotating the hand until it gets into a better position that we like. So something where the knuckles are going to be facing forward. It looks like his hand is going to be able to grab something because we're going to put the bow in his hand by the time that we're done. So we want to make sure that it looks like he has the ability to have something in his hand before we actually align everything. So now that we have the feet position and the hand position, we're just going to go click on the head rotation and we're going to go R and Z and just rotate it something like this. So now you can see we have a nice looking kind of power stance that we can then build off of. From now, so now what we want to do is we want to get our weapon assets and we want to export them into an FBX file. So what we're going to do is without closing this, we're just going to go and open up Blender in a second program. Now you can also do this in the start of the video, but a lot of times I just do this in between whenever I need to, because we can just go ahead and go to recent files, weapon assets, make sure you're in object mode, go to file, export, FBX. Leave most of the settings here, but we're actually going to change under geometry. We're going to change from normals to face armature. We're going to change add leaf bones to only deform bones, and we're going to uncheck bake animation. Now from here, we're just going to go ahead and find a file to save it into. So I'm just going to save it right into this file here and export FBX. Now what we can do is we can close down this file completely because we don't need this. And we can go file, import, FBX. And now you can see we have the weapon assets FBX. We can, you know, just like before, keep all the settings and just import. Now we'll go ahead and drag it off to the side. And then we're going to grab the armature for the bow. And we're going to bring it over, up, and we're going to rotate it. So this way we can start kind of lining it up in his hand. To make animations a little easier for us so we're just going to go you know kind of moving it around rotating it and i'll tell you guys one quick thing is that if you make your hand line up like you see like my my hand is really nice and straight if you make your line up like this right off the bat it is going to make your life so much easier so try to do your best on making your lineups as good as you can on your hand because this one when you go and you line up your bow later it's going to make just like i said that much easier so we'll go ahead and we'll just kind of move it a little bit. Now, as you can see, we have the knock of the bow in the middle of the hand. So we're just going to go G and X, move it up until it's right about just above where the thumb's position is. Because now with the armature selected here, we can shift click on the um, arm controller here and then control P and then set parent to object. Because now if you look, I can take this controller, just the controller, and it'll actually move with the bow. So now the bow is in my hand. Now the other thing I like to do is take the quiver, bring it up, R, Y, and we're gonna kind of move it into position so we can kind of get an idea of where our grab is gonna be for our arrow. Now one thing I will say too is that these cylindrical quivers generally cause more problems. So I recommend just giving it a slight oval shape and then going R and then double, and then going R, double tap on Z, and this way you can rotate it to kind of match the rotation of the body. And the reason why I like doing this is because it just makes an honestly a better lineup uh, by the time that you're all said and done. Now you can also put this on the other side as well if you like. I'm just going off of the same basic style that I showed you guys um, in the demo video. So that's kind of what I'm following here is just that particular style. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move the arm until I get a better rotation that doesn't quite quite clip into everything so something like this 
Because now if we zoom out here, we can see we have a really nice power stance start. And we can even just move this around a little bit if we don't like, you know, that bend in the arm there. We can kind of move it forward, maybe move it down a little bit, something like this. And then we can, you know, rotate along the x-axis a little bit. Now, the one thing that you do want to make sure to do, though, is when you're rotating and moving, always make sure that you're trying to, again, avoid as much clipping as possible. But also, if I take this and I go like this, you'll see the bow sticks to the uh, empty, but the hand can only go so far. Never have your controller moving in a way that your arm can't match. So you see, like, as soon as I push it back, everywhere I move the controller, the arm goes. But if I go outside of its distance or its reach, it's just going to basically have it stretched out. So this is something to keep in mind that you want to be very careful on how you apply some of the locations. So now that we have our bow in our hand and we have our kind of ready position, what we're going to do is we're going to go Alt H to bring back in the armature, click on it, go into pose mode, and we're going to make some adjustments on the hand here. So we're going to make it so that way he's actually gripping the bow. So if we box select the hand, Control I to inverse the selection, and then H on our keyboard, we can now hide everything except for what we actually need. Now, one thing I also recommend when using, um, when doing like hand bone animation, change the scaling or the transform orientations up here from global to local, and you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. Because now we can just kind of shift select on the entire knuckle section here, and then just R and Z. And then go to the next section below it, R and Z. And then go to the ones here, R and Z. And then just keep rotating until you get something that looks good for you. You know, it does. It just needs to be, you know, kind of gripping the bow as best as you can get it. Now, one thing to keep in mind whenever you're doing hand animations is it's very easy to not only get lost in the bone hierarchy, but it's also very easy to um, accidentally clip into your object. So make sure that when you're doing your rotations for your fingers that you're lining up with the way that the bow shape is because now you can see i've got it kind of looking like he's fully gripping it the only thing i need to change now is going to be the thumb position so i'm just going to grab this bone here and then i'm just going to go g and z bring it in g and y bring it up to the base there then g and y again or g and uh x here just like this, because now we have this position. Because then what I can do is copy all of this, so we're actually going to unhide all of the armature here. And then we're going to go A to select all, and we're going to go to the uh, object data properties here with the running man icon, and we're going to go to pose library. Now with the drop down menu, we can click on plus new, and then we can rename this to base poses, base poses info. And then we're going to click the plus icon here and then just add new. What this is going to do is save all this bone information. So like the hand here, this hand here, all of the things that aren't tied specifically to the IK system, it's going to save that data so we can now use it. So this is going to be the default combat idle. So now what we can do though, is we can start creating some really interesting animations from this. So we're going to go back into object mode, click on our armature, and we're going to hide it. So, because now what we can do is we're going to grab the back hand here and we're going to go I and we're going to location, rotation, scale, making sure we keyframe all of it. Go to frame 30 or somewhere soon. I mean, frame 30 is just usually where I start. And then we're just going to go G and Z. Oh, also make sure to change the transform orientations back to global. Um, so, so we can go G and Z and bring it up, G and X to bring it out, G and Y. And basically what you're going to do is keep rotating the hand until it looks like he's reaching outwards to grab something. So we're basically, what we're going to be doing is setting it so that way it looks like he's pushing his arm out to reach for something. So we don't want it to be too high or outwards too far. So something like this, you know, something like that'll just work. So we can go I, location, rotation, scale. And I would say pulling this back to about 10 frames is not a bad idea. But you can put it wherever you want. The timing on the keyframe, so like down here, is really just going to change the timing of the animation. So now what we can do is just go G and Y, pull it forward to where he's kind of on the quiver area, and then we're just going to use rotation to be able to change the arm. We 
We can also use location. And we're just going to keep rotating until we get a nice kind of looking like he's grabbing at the quiver or something like this. Because what we can do now is just I, location, rotation, scale. And then we're going to bring it back to frame 20. Because now this is what we get. We start from this position. And then he goes and he grabs from an arrow. Now one thing I'm, you'll probably notice is that it goes from here. And then it kind of does like weird back rotation. You can do in between frames and add extra keyframes if you don't like the rotation. But I'm just, again, showing you guys the practices, fine tuning it. That's all up to you. Now, once we have this location here, what we can do is go down to where our bow is here and we can actually I location, rotation and scale because now these two are going to start working and moving at the same time. So we want to make sure that we are making sure that this is locked in this position from fame 20 and then after that we'll be able to make some animation data. So we're going to go back to the hand here and we're going to go to frame 30. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to have it utilize the same keyframe on frame 10. So we're just going to select it, shift D, and put it on frame 30. And this way it kind of goes backwards, but we're going to change its position a little bit. So we're going to kind of make it so it's rotated a little bit more along the Y. Bring it up a little bit. Maybe kind of bring it more in on the Z axis a little bit. Because we're going to basically make it look like he's just grabbed and pulled an arrow out of the quiver. So that's kind of the look that we're trying to mimic, more or less. So we can go I, location, rotation, scale. And then now this is what we're left with. He goes in, grabs, pulls it out. And then now from here, this is where we want to start making our bow. Because usually as you grab the arrow, you're also going to start raising the bow to its ready position. So from here, we can grab this one and go R. Y, start rotating it up, bring it back on the x-axis, and bring it up on the z-axis, change its x a little bit, so this way it's not clipping inside of the arm so much, and then move it forward, you know, it's just basically playing around with it until you get the look that you're happy with, because I think something like this will look good for this frame, so location, rotation, scale, and then we'll go to frame 40, and this is where we're actually going to get our bow at our full lineup. So we're going to go R, Y, get it nice and straight, somewhat. <laughs> and then R, Z, so this way we can straighten this up. G and Z to bring it up. G and Y to bring it forward. And we're just going to keep playing with these values until we get something that we're nice and happy with. So again, we want to make sure that our bow string is flush with everything. We want to make sure our lineups are good. And this is the reason why we, you know, we use objects to help with our lineups because it ultimately makes our lives that much easier. Now, one thing I'm sure you can see is that the bow doesn't quite match the rotation here. So what I'm going to do is grab the armature and I'm just going to rotate it until it fits better into the, how the hands rotation is. Because then I can just go back and use the hand rotator, hand controller, I mean, and I can just use this to straighten it out. And this way, everything's going to look a little bit more proper and look like it's properly lining up to itself. So we're just going to go G and X, G and Y. This way we make sure our string is kind of going to go straight back almost into his chest. Because now we're going to go I, location, rotation, and scale. Because what will happen now... As he's going to go from here, grab the arrow, and now we're going to take the other arm controller, and we're going to go GX to bring it in, GZ to bring it up, and GY to bring it forward. And then we're going to kind of line it up just like this. Now you can see the arm is going inside of the body. That honestly is fine, because we're going to use uh, bone rotations to adjust everything. So we're going to bring it back to right about here, and then we're just going to go location, rotation, scale, Alt H to bring the armature, click on it, and go into pose mode. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the shoulder bone, and we're going to I, location, rotation, scale, making sure that it's, you know, it's defaulting back to, because pretty much right up until that point, it's no problem. But once we get from 30 to 40, it's a little bit of a problem. So we're going to go to frame 40, and we're going to do a bit of a rotation on the Y axis, just like this. 
Now we can also, if we need to, we can highlight all of this by just holding shift and box selecting a bunch of things like this, and we can hide most of the armature that we don't need. And then we can go back to the shoulder bone here, and we can just keep rotating until we get the rota uh, rotation that we want. You can also use the clavicle as well, which is generally on the inside of the chest, to be able to create a very similar look to that rotation. So it's really up to you on how you do it. Just bear in mind that you don't want to go too far or too heavy on your rotations, because otherwise it will end up causing more problems than it's going to solve. Now, once we have this shoulder up, what we're going to do is make sure to keyframe it, so this way it's going to be locked in its position. And it looks like I accidentally hit it, so we're just going to go Control h to unhide it, go back to the shoulder here, and then we're going to go I, Location, Rotation, and Scale. Because now what will happen is the shoulder is going to look like it's moving properly with the arm, giving it a much better lineup. However, there is some weird stretching and things that are happening, but don't worry, again, this is a base mesh, so that's just going to be how it is. It's going to look different by the time textures are applied. So we can go control tab back into object mode and I'm going to take this and move it back a little bit and I'm also going to move it out along the x-axis and this is just to kind of prevent it from looking like it's being a little too aggressive on itself because we don't want that to be the case. We want to kind of make it so that way it's going to move and look the way it should from start to finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab both of these controllers here and we're going to make sure that they're both very straight. So something like this and then we're going to go back to the bow fix its rotation again, might have to fix its lineup, but this way now your bow and your draw is going to be lined up pretty nicely. Now what you can also do if you want to make it so your draw is going to be perfectly aligned is if you go ahead, hide the armature, grab your arrow, shift D to duplicate it, and bring it over and up. Now we're going to go RY90, I'm sorry, RX90, and then we're going to bring it across and line it up on our arrow knock. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this for positioning so we can do our drawback and make sure everything looks really nice and proper. So what we're going to do first is just align it on the knock and then we're going to go RY and bring it back to something like this. Now our arrow is not going to be long enough so we can go S and Y and scale it along a little bit until it's going to be proper. Then we're going to go G and Y and bring it up just like this. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to take the hand controller and we're going to go back to frame 40. Now from frame, frame 40, we're just going to use the arrow lineup to be able to kind of make sure that we are properly lined up on the drawing of the bow itself. So as you can see, it's a little off on the knock, so we can move it over to the x-axis a little bit more. Making sure that it's properly lined up, it's like a little too low on the z, so we'll move it up a little bit, and there we go. Now we have a little bit of a lineup on our arrow, and we can use this to be able to create our draw bow animation. And that's gonna be probably the most crucial part of the entire thing. So what we're gonna do is take our arrow, line it up on our knock and see how it looks. The fletching is clipping in a little bit, but that's okay. We can always just scale this back just a little bit in this way and then move it back. And this way the fletching is not gonna be clipping as heavily. Now what we also wanna do though is make sure to parent this arrow to the other hand. So we're actually gonna take it, drag it back into the hand and then make sure the hand's position is proper as well. Now, so long as this is true, you are all set. But however, we can see that there is some weird rotation value along the Z. So we're going to make sure that this is lined up appropriately before we start doing the animation. Because if it is not, it's actually going to make our lives a lot more difficult. Now, we can also go and rotate a little on the Z here as well. Because we want to make sure it's straight along with the axis value. And the reason to do this is primarily because if you don't, what's going to happen is you're actually going to find that when you go and make values for things like... Uh, the aim offset, this is actually going to cause a problem. So as long as you're every, as long as everything is straight, your aim offsets are going to be perfect. However, if it's not straight, your aim offsets are going to be atrocious. Just take it from me. I've got a lot of experience with awful aim offsets. So, <laughs> but once we have the position here, what we can do is take the arrow, right click or shift click on the uh, other controller for the other arm. And then we're just going to go control P and we're going to snap set parent to object. Because now what will happen is you can see the arrow is now sticking to the hand. So we can take a look at how everything looks as we go up. So we'll go to frame zero and we'll just see how everything looks. And I think it looks pretty good. You know, he's actually looking like he's trying to line it up pretty early on. So we can go right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go R. I'm sorry. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go G, Y. 
and we're going to pull this back until the arrow is all the way back. And realistically, the best position you can do is trying to get it just below the jawline. So like right about here is going to be good. We're going to want to raise it up a little bit, but this is going to be a good starting position. Now, as you can see here, the rotation on my hand is a little off, but honestly, that's okay. Because we can go ahead and just go G and X, move it out a little bit, and G and Z to move it in a little bit. So you can just kind of move it out and then in a little bit to be able to fix it, something like this. Now, as you can see here, though, we got some weird issues happening on the shoulder. So we're going to go Alt-H, back into pose mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the clavicle bone here has got a little bit more rotation to it. This will help with that stretching. So we're just going to go RX and kind of just keep rotating it until it looks a little bit better as far as the positioning of the mesh. And I think that's going to look pretty good. There's some weird kind of, um, kind of clipping happening on the elbow here. So you can change that by... Just grabbing the controller. So we'll go back into object mode here, hide the armature, and we'll just go G and X like this. This will make it so that way it's a little bit of a better lineup, but you really want it to be a little closer, kind of up like this. Because then we'll just take the hand, do the same thing, line it up, and bring it over. Just like this. Because this way it'll sit nice on the knock. And it's lined up with the bow's position. So when you go I, location, rotation, and scale, go up to here, I, location, rotation, scale. And then now, we'll go back and we'll play and see what we got. So he goes, grabs the arrow, and he's pulling it back. Now, one thing that I do say is, like, when you're creating these types of animations, right, you can see that there's, the arms are moving, everything looks great, but the one thing that could be better is going to be the body's position. So easiest way to add rotation in is we're gonna go into pose mode here and I'm gonna click on the little uh, pelvis bone here. Now, what I'm gonna show you is how to be able to add some really easy rotation that's gonna actually add a lot more life than you would think. So we're gonna I, location, rotation, scale at zero. This way it zeroes it out right there. And we're gonna look for where he goes and grabs. So that's gonna be right around frame 20. I'm gonna go and look at where he starts to really move. So it's like from frame 10 to frame 20, right? So we're going to go R, Z, and we're just going to do a really slight rotation, making it look like he's moving into that. And we're going to go location, rotation, scale, and we'll see how this plays. It actually looks pretty good. So we're going to look at when he draws back, and that's going to be right around frame 30. So we can even just take this, maybe move it slight back a bit, and then we're going to go to frame 0 and bring up the 30. And because what this is going to do is give it forward, back, and then from here... What we're going to do is go to frame 40, take this keyframe here, and we're going to shift D to duplicate it, go to frame 50, and we're going to look at this. And what I want to do is create a bit of a rotation when he goes and he fires and he goes to like draw the bow back. Because what this is going to do is give it kind of like a more straight rotation looking more proper. So I'm just going to go I, location, rotation. Because now if I go back and I go into object mode here, hide the uh, skeleton. And it looks like we got a bit of a rotation issue here. So we're going to go back to the armature here. Look at the clavicle. And we're going to set it back down. I. So actually, I'll show you guys a trick. If you ever have this problem where you have a rotation that you know you need, but you know you don't need it too early on, location, rotation, scale, move it forward, fix the rotation. So for me, it's going to be the X rotation. So I'm going to kind of move this down like this and move this down like this. So this way it's more kind of back to its default value. And then I'm just going to go I, location, rotation, scale, and I'm going to look at when I need it. So I think it's going to be right around from 20 to 30. So I'm going to grab this one, duplicate it from 20 to 30. And this way it'll keep this position until I need it. And I think that's actually going to be for when we draw. So we're going to go take this and we're going to put it to frame 50. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to move it up to frame 40. So it looks like that's right about when we need it to ensure that our animation lines up properly. Now, as you can see here, we got the bow lined up. We got the arrow lined up pretty nicely. And it's all coming right from our IK rig animation setup. So one thing that I also suggest is this doesn't really matter. I would say doing this earlier if you're going to use 60 FPS. But if we change the frame rate from 24 to 30 before you do any exporting, it's going to make your animations a lot smoother. 
But realistically, if you're going to use 60 FPS, make sure to change this earlier on. With these keyframes, it's fine. But it's just something to you know, keep in mind. Now, these are playing back at 11 FPS. So they're going to look a little slower than what they're meant to be. But this gives you the basic idea of creating, going around, grabbing, pulling, and lining up. Now, what we can also do is look at the um, controller for the hand for the bow and look at its final position. We can actually maybe move this forward a slight bit like this. I, location, rotation, and scale. Because then what it'll do is it'll actually kind of do this. So you see how he's kind of like pulling the bow forward and pushing the arrow back. Or I guess opposite, pushing the bow forward and pulling the arrow back. But you get what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's really kind of the animation data that we're creating there. And look at that. We've got a nice good pose going. So now we have the character kind of grabbing and stuff. What we're going to do now is just quickly add some hand animation for when he grabs the arrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit to a spot where we have the hand. And I think really the beginning is going to be the best point because then we can just box select this hand, control I to inverse the selection. And then we're just going to H to hide all. And then we're going to go back and we're going to look at right about here is when he grows and grabs it right around frame 20. So at frame 10, I'm going to highlight everything. I location, rotation, scale, go to frame 20. And this is where we're going to make some kind of changes to it. So again, making sure to select global or local instead of global under the transform orientations. And then we're just going to grab all the fingers here and we're going to go R and Z. And then we're going to grab these two R, Y. Actually, we'll grab all three and we're going to go R, Y to kind of move them out a little bit. And this one R, Y. And then we're going to go location, rotation, scale. And then when he goes back. Ah, so make sure all are selected. So I'm just going to go control Z to reapply those transforms that I just had. And then make sure A to select all and then I location, rotation, scale. This way it'll actually save that keyframe. So now you'll see we get a little bit more of like a pullback and I can go back into object mode. I'll take the arrow. And I'll slide it back. Make sure to select global here. Uh, but we'll just slide it back into his hand, something like this. Because what we then want to do is we want to make it so that way at frame 40, we're going to take this and move it slightly back so it's more like right here. And then we're going to take this and move this forward so it's like right here-ish. We'll take them both, kind of move them back, maybe move them down a little bit. Give it a kind of slight upward rotation. And this is just to make it so that way things aren't clipping into each other. Because then we can go I, location, rotation, scale. And now what will happen is this. You can see that now the arrow's position is not lining up anymore when he goes and does the draw. Now the reason for this is because we've changed the location information for a lot of things. So by the time it gets to the middle, it doesn't really know what to do. Easiest way to fix this is to just grab the controller for the arrow and make some slight rotation animation adjustments. So we'll rotate it on the Y axis and the X axis, and we'll change it from global to local just to make this easier for ourselves. And we'll go X axis. And it's just, again, it's a lot of rotating. And, you know, once you got it in position, location, rotation, scale, and then now... It's a bit of a better lineup, but again, it's not perfect. You know, this is all about just going and fine tuning to make sure that it looks the way you would want it to. You know, but this is a very basic animation. This is something that, and again, the stretching of textures, you won't see as much inside of the actual uh, game itself. But as you can see that now we have a lineup here and he pulls back and he draws the bow. What we can do is go into the bow here and we're going to look for the uh, bone here that controls the drawstring. And in pose mode, we're just going to go G and Y. And we're going to move it back until it hits the end of the arrow. So we know how far back we need to bend the bow. Now, once we have this, we can go N, look at the Y value. And it looks like 4.78 to 4.8 is going to be what we need. So this is the location data. So if I go G and Y, you'll see that that value changes. So we need 4.78. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be on the Y value. This is just how far away from the bow the string needs to be to be able to be on its full pullback. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to open up a secondary blender file. 
Now, once this is loaded up, we can just go to recent files, click on weapon assets, and then what we're going to do is go into the bow. Now, automatically it put me in pose mode, but yours might not. And we're going to make animation data. Now, we know if we go back here that we're drawing the bow from frame 40 to frame 50. This is our bow draw period, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we copy that pathway. So it's not really copy it like copy paste or anything. It's just making sure we use the same values, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to I to select or A to select all, I and then location rotation scale. And then we're also going to go to the influence and we're going to I over influence on our keyboard on both of the I case for the bow. Now what this is going to do is kind of lock in its transforms because what we want to do is we're going to go to frame 40 and we're going to take this one and we're going to duplicate it up to frame 40. Take this one, duplicate it up to frame 40 and this one, duplicate it up to frame 40. Because now what we want to do is from 40 to 50, we're actually going to do our draw bow animation. So we're going to go and set the influence to one, keyframe that at frame 50, do the same thing over here, set the influence to one, keyframe that, and then take the bow draw. And we know that it's a 4.78. Now, realistically for this, it's going to be on the Z value. So what we're going to do is use the Z value for this instead. So we're going to go 4.78. And now, as you can see, we have this nice drawback and we can go keyframe we're using an I on our keyboard and location, rotation, scale. And now we have this. So that's going to be the draw bow. And it's again, keyframe matched for our character. So that way, when he goes and draws his bow, it's the same duration. So now that we have this set up here, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you guys some really easy tricks to adding in the next steps, which are going to be the firing bow and the reset going into like the combo shot. So these are going to be the last two animations we make as we now can realistically, we can use this same animation for both quick shot and charge shot, all we're really gonna do is just add a little bit more data to this. And again, you can fine tune this by making him kind of like drop down while he draws, putting more, the amount of work you put into your animation is going to show when you actually play the game. So again, I'm just showing you the principles and practices. Yours are probably gonna look better than what you're seeing right here as I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible. So now that we have this, what we can do is we know that our animation ends at frame 50. So what we're going to do is go to our timeline and we're going to set the keyframe start to 50. And then we're also going to go into our armature here. So we're going to click on the hand. I'm going to go back into uh, object mode because we're in pose mode for the bow. Uh, click on the hand, go into pose mode, alt H to unhide everything. Because this time we want to use a little bit more of the skeleton. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the pose mode or the pose library. And we're going to add another pose in now. But what we're going to do is we're going to take just the hand. So we, we're keeping everything, but this for this, we just want the hand. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and box select these. I'll hide that, get those out of my way. And this way I can box select all of these. Control I will actually hide this back out real quick. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to save this particular um, section of bone animation to our pose library. So with the hand all selected, we're going to go plus new, add new. And we're going to change this and rename it to grab arrow in parentheses hand. So we know that this is just data for the hand specifically. Now, the reason why we want this is because we're going to keyframe all this data. So location, rotation, scale, go to frame 55. And then we're going to go default combat idle. And then we're going to use the little um, magnifying glass here to apply this data to the hand, which is going to do this. Pretty cool, right? We can use the library data for specific sections on whatever we have highlighted. Because now we can go I, location, rotation, and scale. And then now we get this. Goes and does the draw, and then does that. So it looks like it did not apply it to all of the hand, but that's totally fine. We can fix this. So we're going to go Control Z back a little bit. And we're going to make sure everything is selected here. I, location, rotation, scale. All right, so it looks like it just didn't apply everything properly, which is totally fine because we can just go back to frame 55, make sure our default combat idle is selected and apply it. Then A, then use I to be able to go location, rotation, scale. Now we should get what we're looking for. You can see it kind of goes from this and then that. Now what we're also going to do though is we're going to go back into object mode, grab this hand controller, and when he gets to here, we kind of want him to go back and up and out so it's kind of a little bit of like a 
torque release, right? Like maybe give him a bit of like a upwards rotation. We'll change the transforms back to global. Something like this, I think, is going to look pretty good. You know, something that's just going to kind of make it look like he actually let go of the bow. So I'm going to go I, location, rotation, scale. And then now when we let go of the bow, that's what we get. And the cool thing is, is that because if we do like a combo shot or something, it's going to immediately align it back to here. So it's going to almost going to play it backwards, but really fast. So what I can do is I'll just set it to 55 here. So that way you guys can just literally see that's how it works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to be able to make the combo section. So to be able to make the combo shot, it's actually really easy. So we're going to take the start, set it to 55, and then we're going to take the, uh, actually we'll set it to, we'll set it to 60. So we're going to go start 60 and then we're going to take frame 50 and we're going to put it back here. So this way it kind of puts the arm back into position. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to take the arrow and we're going to duplicate it a couple of times. So we're going to go shift D, duplicate it, shift, and we go G and Z to bring it up. And I'm going to go R, X, and we're going to rotate it because then we can go G and Z, bring it up and then duplicate it again, G and Z to bring it down, R, X, maybe a little too much on that rotation, just like this. So now we have these two set up here. We'll take both of these and move them over just a smidge. This way they're not clipping too heavily into the bow. Now what we're going to want to do is basically create an animation where he's going to go forward, back, and then kind of do like an up, down, down, up situation. So what we're going to do is set the end to maybe around 90. And then we're going to go and make sure that this location is keyframed, which it is. And then we're going to go back to where we have our draw bow, right? So right about here, just to make sure that we're matching most of the data, we're just gonna take a quick look at it. Cause then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to frame 65, G, Y, move it forward, and then location, rotation, scale. And then we're gonna go to frame 70, take the keyframe that's at frame 60 and put it at 70. This way it's gonna do this. Now what we're also gonna do is when it goes forward, we're going to go R, Z, we're going to go R, X, and we're going to have them kind of realign the bottom arrow. So we're going to go I, location, rotation, scale, and now what will happen is it'll start here, forward, line up, and then kind of back in. So it's, what's going to happen is you're basically going to hide one arrow and then it's going to take its place when you pull this back in. So it's going to look kind of like this. So it's going to go forward and then back down. And then to make the last little detail here, we're just going to go to the last frame on key uh, frame 70 here. Just we're just doing some testing. And then we're just going to go R and Z. I'm sorry, R and X. And we're going to line this up here just like this. And then we're going to go I, location, rotation, scale. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because, watch, it looks more proper to the lineup. So if you wanted to just have it so that way it's just going to be grabbing and lining up that arrow, you can do that. Or you can just have it to where it's set up on the middle arrow, and you can just use, like, arrow visibility instead. So it's really up to you on how you like to set it up. I like this type of setup where it kind of just goes to here, and then it's going to kind of drop back down and realign a new arrow. So it's really up to you, but that's what I like to do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go end 70, start 70, and 90. And then we're going to do the same thing, but basically reverse. So we're going to take the keyframe here. We're going to put it at 75. And 70, we'll put it at 80. And we're going to go to where it says 75. And we're just going to do the same thing, but opposite. So we're going to go... R, X, and this time we're going to go lining up the bottom one. We're actually going to have to bring that up a little bit. And then we're going to go I, location, rotation, scale, just like this. Now you can also, if you wanted to, you can bring this forward a little bit. So that way it's a little bit more of a lineup, location, rotation, scale, bring it up another few frames, and then bring it back to its default position on the full draw. So the reason why I say this is because if you do that, you get a little bit more smoothness on the way it kind of like brings that up just like that. So I'm just showing you a few different ways you can go about it to be able to create the animation data that you might want. Because then what we can do is once we have all of these, we can just go back to start zero 
And this is why I like doing my animations this way, is that we can look from start to finish. So I can go and just from zero, goes, grabs his arrows, lines it up, boom, fire. You know, and you can see each combo shot. So this is the reason why I like setting them up on timelines like this, because it makes it so I can look and see every single one while they're happening. So what we can do is we're going to take a look at one last little piece, which is going to be the lineup for the combo shot on the bow itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how long it takes. So it looks like from start to finish, it's going from 60, it's going forward, drawing on the bow, and then he's going to kind of go like this. So we want to make sure that whatever the draw is, so it looks like maybe from 80 to 85. So it's about a five second draw or a five frame draw. So what we can do is we're going to go to uh, the bow here. And we also want to make sure we track its same um, style. So we're going to go 80 to 85 and 65 to 70. So we can just go back to the bow here. And we're going to go start 80. Making sure that we also take the first keyframe sections here and put them at the end. We want to make sure that it starts at this position. Doing the same thing with these ones here. Just taking these keyframes, put them at 80. And then we also want to make sure we do the same thing for the other section. So we've got what? So we got 65 to 70 and 80 to 85. So what we can do is go 80, 85. And then we'll just take this keyframe at uh, 50 here. And we'll put this here. Now, if you have everything highlighted with A, a lot of times you can copy just the keyframe. It'll take everything. So something you guys can do. Because then what we can do is from 80 to 85. And then we'll go 65 to 70. So we'll go start 65 and 70. And we can just copy these keyframes just like this. So now you can see, pull back, pull back. Now, the last thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to go to frame 90 on here. 90. And we're going to go to 100. So from frame 90 to frame 100. And what we're going to do is take this position, copy these, but we're actually going to reverse them because now what we're going to set up is a quick firing bow uh, animation, which realistically, usually I find that doing it just a few frames is all you need. So we're going to look at 93. And the end's going to be at 93. So now we have the standard draw, quick draw com for the combo, and the standard fire. You're going to use the same fire for all of them. So that's the reason why we only set this up once. But what we can do once we have this is we can just go control S, saves all of our animation data. Go back to this one. And what we can do is actually just go and delete these out. We want to make sure to keep the controllers, but we can just delete these out and now you're good because we're not going to use these for importing. But now if we go again, just going back to the start here, we can grab our arrows and draw the arrow back, fire, reload, and the up and down, the down up is realistically, again, just a combo style that I set up. So however you have your combo style set up, it's entirely up to you. And again, the more time you make or the more time that you spend on your animations, the better that they're going to look. But realistically, using an IK setup and using the pose library to quickly change like hand positions and things like that is always going to make your life so much easier. So that's going to close out for today's video, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. hope you found it informative. If you guys have any you know, questions, concerns, comments, as always, please hit me up in either in the Discord or in the comment section. I always love chatting with you guys. So if you have any issues, just hit me up. I'm always available. I'm checking that stuff daily, usually like every few hours. So don't be, a, don't be shy. But in the next video, we're going to look at taking all these animations, putting them together into an archery code. So we're going to get into the fun part in the next video. But that's going to close out for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, stay animated.